Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're checking out a blue-black psychic frog deck which gets to play with some pretty sweet cards including Abhorrent Oculus from Duskmorn, a 5-5 flyer. Usually we have to exile six cards from our graveyard as an additional cost and then at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep we also get to Manifest Dread to keep filling the graveyard, find more creatures that we can eventually flip face up. But in this deck we can also maybe discard the Oculus and then reanimate it for just one mana using Unearth, returning a creature with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield can also be cycled for 2 mana if there's no targets. This is also a Psychic Frog deck, a 1-2. When it deals damage to a player or Planeswalker, we get to draw a card, and we can discard a card at any point to give it a plus one plus one counter, so often we can go all in on the frog, make it huge, and then start drawing cards turn after turn. And we can also maybe give it flying by exiling three cards from our graveyard. We do usually want to keep the graveyard nice and full, because we're also playing Nether Goif. This one mana threat can become quite large, as it increases power and toughness with the number of card types in our graveyard, so unlike the Tarmogoyf, it does not look at the opponent's graveyard, but it's still a nice one mana threat that can also potentially be escaped if we've got a very full graveyard. And that's also a nice creature that we might be able to manifest with Oculus and then turn face up. And then because of Nethergoyf, we want to have as many card types in the deck as possible. The only one we don't have is Battle. We have everyone else, including a Kindred on a Bitter Blossom, which is both Kindred and Enchantment, making 1-1 one -one Fairy Tokens each turn at the cost of 1 life. Not a great card these days, but we're mostly playing it for Nethergoyf. And then Baleful Strix has been a recent addition through the Special Guests or the Bloomborough cards, I'm not sure. A 1-1 one -one Flying Death Touch Artifact Creature Bird that draws a card when it enters so great for trading off against aggro decks, and another card that provides a bit of value that will add more types for the Nethergoyf. And then to clean things up we've got two copies of Toxic Deluge against all the go wide strategies, and then Lilian of the Veil and Planeswalker as another type, and can force the opponent to discard, can also help discard Oculus to then reanimate it in case we don't have Psychic Frog to do that, and then the minus two gives us a nice edict effect. And then we've got a ton of cheap interaction, a couple counter spells like Spell Snare, also another recent addition, can counter spells with mana value two, so especially good on the draw if you just keep up a blue mana and counter the opponent's two drop, that's a great tempo play. Then we've got Stern Scolding, countering creatures with toughness two or less, so great against the energy decks, being able to counter an Ajani, or even their uh, Lurus Companion can be pretty important. And then we've got the typical removal and discard package with Fatal Push, Inquisition, and then two copies of Thoughtseize as well. And then the mana base also includes Prismatic Vista, the only fetch land that's legal in the format that will enter untapped early, also adds an extra card and an extra type in the graveyard, and then lots of dual lands with Watery Grave, Dark Slick, Pathway, couple channel lands, and then a couple basics which we can search up with our Prismatic Vista. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Can open with Thoughtseize into Psychic Frog. Opponent on the energy deck. Even with the nerfs, still very powerful. And our opponent's got Static Prison as removal. Ocelot. Still scary with Guide of Souls, even if it costs two mana. Sentinel we can sort of ignore for now. So yeah, Static Prison answers Frog, but Ocelot's just makes a million tokens, which we cannot attack into with the frog all that well. So I think all sorts to pick. So Guide of Souls into Sentinel. And get a bunch of energy. But now they need four in order to use the ability. And Fatal Push the draw. So if I want to push, I probably pay the Sentinel tax. Or I can just play Baleful Strix to get in the way. And then next turn, we'll see if we want to maybe push plus Nethergoyf. Soul Warden for more life gain. So yeah, I'm glad we got rid of the Ocelot. And does our opponent use Static Prison? They do. Feels like a win. So now if they spend energy, we can maybe end up pushing the bigger Guide of Souls, or they might grow Sentinels, so we have to pay more tax. Which also makes sense. 
So I wouldn't be able to pay the tax, our opponent gets to draw, but then we'll have dealt with a sentinel, which is not a bad thing. And then if I play frog, I could also potentially give it flying if I grow it and then exile three cards from my graveyard. So we could maybe set up an ambush. Another guide of souls starts adding up. And just one guide attacking. Yeah, I think we go for it here. Keep Fatal Push. And then... Want to keep a good mix of types for Nethergoif. Oculus I might want to keep if we find an Earth. And maybe Sorcery is more likely to end up in the graveyard. Our opponent's looking through the graveyard for a Jolted Awake. So, reanimating a creature, it's going to be the Ocelots. So that's going to give them a bunch more energy. At least they don't have the City's Blessing yet. And we can Fatal Push the Ocelot now. And I don't think I'm in a position to attack, unfortunately. Since they would just block with a token. Hit me back for at least, let's see, three, four, five damage if I take out the pride. So that would put me under a pretty fast clock. So yeah, just gotta be patient, I guess. And Draptor is a great one. That's where being able to counter it for one mana is probably the best answer. Ooh, and a Goblin Bombardment, so we might just be dead. Take out Ocelot now. If they attack, I can once again block and give flying. So our opponent's committing more attackers now. Alright, so let's go for it. Keep Oculus in the graveyard. Try and block the cats. And then if they want to finish off the frog, they need to commit quite a few creatures. So we might see them go face instead. Alright. Take my turn, turn scolding is an answer to future creatures at least. Opponent's down to one energy, so soon we'll get our Baleful Strix back. Just gotta hold on a little bit longer. Opponent can put Luris in hand. And a Jani we have to counter since that would have been game over otherwise with a Goblin Bombardment on the battlefield. Although now we need another answer for Lurus. At least that's still two turns away. Opponent attacks all out. We'll block the Raptor and essentially take three. But uh, yeah, we'll get our Strix back. So, still not loving my position, but it's Potentially still winnable.
unearth was perfect, so I can get back Oculus now. And I think I actually turn Psychic Frog sideways. Since we'll also get Strix back, so we have a decent amount of pressure. And I'll get in for five. But yeah, the problem is we are at five and every creature represents a damage with Bombardment. So Lurus eventually getting back a Jani is going to be lethal, so we kind of need to draw into a counter spell here. But for now, Oculus isn't bad. And then we have Sorcery and Land already, so this doesn't matter. Might end up cycling an Earth. Strix draws Psychic Frog. And Lurus in hand. So we absolutely need to find an answer for Lurus. And Inquisition is exactly that. Awesome. So, attack with Oculus, Psychic Frog, and probably phase down card as well. So I leave Strix back in case they can gain a bunch of energy all at once. And then play another Nether Goyf, I guess. One might already be thinking about chumping and sacking to the bombardments. So we're at four. A virtual two life. And Lurus is gone. And our opponent says, oops, indeed. Could still be convinced to play Frog over Goyf, because this can draw some more answers, potentially. And we can make it large enough. Alright, and we get to Manifest Dread. Spell Snare is the answer I would have liked to draw. I guess we don't need to show it to them. Ether Hub is fine. So that's a miss. Alright, send in Psychic Frogs, Oculus, and both face down cards. So everyone accepts Strix. And our opponent's already jumping. So we're at two. If our opponent top decks an Ajani or an Amped Raptor, which could represent two creatures, we still die. Don't have any answers to the bombardment itself. And then the fact that we drew Inquisition instead of Thoughtseize to take away Lurus also made the difference, otherwise we would have been dead. Baleful Strix is not going to draw a card if we turn it face up. And our opponent with just a lance, so I think we got there. Wow, what a close game. Epic, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got double Nether Goyf, Stern Scolding. Oculus is probably going to be stuck in hand for a while. So this hand's not all that exciting, actually. This one is missing blue mana. Otherwise, it seems fine. Yeah, we can try it. Psychic Frog, a way to discard Oculus, and then we can unearth it back. So we'll keep, get rid of Stern Scolding. 
and see what we're up against. Turn one elves. Alright, get our blue mana, play Psychic Frog. And then next turn we can already get the Oculus in play. Scrap Shooter 4-4 four, four will get in the way. Although I'm happy to potentially discard three cards to the frog. Put on blocks. Bitter Blossom, Oculus. And then land versus another frog. I think I maybe still keep the second frog for now. And that's a turn three Oculus. This one shouldn't matter too much. Lucranos, 4-5 reach, doesn't actually block all that well. So yeah, let's get in there. And then another Goyf is already a 5-6. And draw with Psychic Frog. And it's just gonna be another Goyf here, I think. As a turn. Manifest another Oculus. So we can turn that face up next turn. Yeah, that's a lot of beefy creatures. Opponent's got a Cavalier. So they are on a Devotion build. Cavalier does find Nykthos, but at least they won't be able to tap it for mana right away. So let's see here. We can play a third land. Turn Oculus face up, and then what happens if we attack with everyone? Our opponents go to one profitable block with Cavalier on Oculus, but then at most they can soak up five damage. So that should still have us attacking for lethal here. So yeah, let's go for it. Can discard two more cards to Psychic Frog. Opponent does block Oculus. They can prevents 6 damage by blocking Psychic Frog. Goes for Oculus. And that's already 11 damage coming across. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is functional. We'll see if we try and cast Oculus or maybe discard it and then find an Earth to reanimate it. Opponent opens with Thoughtseize. And they're playing black-green. Takes Oculus, potentially doing me a favor. Now I don't have another island I can fetch with Prismatic Vista. I think I do want to keep up Spell Snare, however. So I'll just take two. And then we can also Fatal Push if needed. And Rafine's Informant, so it is a Grease Fang deck. Yeah, I think we Spell Snare. There's not too many other super high impact two drops that we need to counter. And then now I can go Nether Goyf. If I play Vista, I'll add Land as an extra type. Although I'm not really in a hurry. There's no burn spells I need to play around, for instance. Now, plusing Liliana could be doing the opponent a favor as well. I guess what I hadn't considered is Vista to enable Revolt on Fatal Push, but they don't have a vehicle in the graveyard for Grease Fang. So we can maybe save that for next turn. Yeah, with Fatal Push plus Vista, I may be less worried about Grease Fang. Although there's still a window here if I plus Liliana that they could set it up. So maybe it's a little bit better if we wait one more turn. And for now just hit for two. Seeker's Chariot is a good backup plan. So I'm probably gonna push one of the tokens. Liliana Edict the other one. 
And then still have Fatal Push with Revolt at the ready. Another Goyf still kind of on the small side here. Just creature and instant. Our opponent does nothing. Now we can plus discarding lands. Drop it. And a bitter triumph discarded. Could have been an answer to Liliana, so kind of surprised. Is there a point in playing Ottawara? I don't think so. Opponent channels Abandoned Mire. Mills over a couple more vehicles, gets Informant back. And they have Grease Fang, so I need to go full control here in order to Fatal Push. I guess the problem is they'll still get to crew Isika's Chariots, but I also don't want them getting back a Chariot from the Graveyard. So yeah, I will lose Liliana, but so it goes. And Liliana down. And Inquisition can have a look. They've got a Sky Sovereign left. Luckily doesn't clean up another Goyf by itself. And now we've got a pretty fast clock. Another Chariot was a good top deck. And they can immediately crew the Chariot that's already in play to make another cat. Although I can bounce a cat that's left over and hit them down to one, which is not quite zero. So is that to play? Or I can just pass so that they don't get to get ahead with chariots, but then we're also not really doing much ourselves. It's not like our opponent has a lot of pain lands where putting them to one makes a huge difference. Although then maybe drawing a flyer could present lethal, but there's also a Sky Sovereign coming down soon. So yeah, tough position. So not entirely sure what uh, correct play is. I think I do put them to one. That way if they want to crew chariots to attack, they die to another removal spell on the cat token. Alright, opponent's going for it. And Unearth gets back. Our Oculus has to be the play. And now we've got a Lethal Flyer and Psychic Frog we can turn face up as well. Just got to dodge Grease Fang for a turn. That's a Grease Fang. Are we dead? We can block one of the flyers and then take eight. But I would have to jump with Oculus, so then we also don't have lethal ourselves. That was unfortunate. Yeah, if we had one more life point, I guess our opponent also has the cats to attack with. So they actually have lethal. Yeah, that was a lucky top deck for sure. So block Parhelion, block a cat, can turn face up discard and then still take 10. Yeah, came down to the last turn. Otherwise we had it. GG's. One life. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a beautiful hand. 
Frog discard Oculus, unearth it back. That's all we want out of this deck. I can even play a turn one Nether Goyf now. Opponent Black White's life gain with Sorin. That card's certainly scary. So at most I can discard Creature Land Sorcery. So not enough to really attack into Sorin with another Goyf. Alright, Kaya can exile the Nether Goyf now. So that's pretty good too. At least Psychic Frog still draws if it hits a Planeswalker. So they either give up Kaya or Sorin. Or both. And then immediately bring back Oculus before they can exile it with another Kaya. So that worked out beautifully. Be back. Just you. And get to keep up Spell Snare as well. The perfect draw continues. And for now we already have Sorcery in the Graveyard. So we can add land as well. Thinking about future Nether Goyfs. Kaya will resolve. Could exile my face down card, which has mana value zero. But that's acceptable. And then attack. Yeah, frog drawing off hitting planeswalkers is not something you usually see. So that's been a pleasant surprise. Might want to keep one frog as leftover in case they've got a board wipe. Do I keep up Spell Snare or do I tap out for Bitter Blossom? Bitter Blossom's not bad in the face of a sweeper. Not sure what two drop or so worried about that our opponent could have. So sure. Play Bitter Blossom. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And we could make an interesting play of thought seizing myself to take away Oculus and then unearth it on turn two. I'll try it. Opponent playing with Gigantha as companion. So more likely to be a creature deck as we see the halfling. Yeah, we'll push it, and then maybe next turn we'll make the play I described. I see Runa, so this is a Kethys combo deck. So thought seizing my opponent wouldn't be a bad idea, but I think I just want early pressure from Oculus. And I don't know if they play much removal for it. So the opponent's plan is to get Kethys going, currently missing white mana for it. And a Jace. So that's their eventual win condition. Although if they mill me, they're enabling the second Oculus. So they're gonna first mill themselves to fill the graveyard. Tyvar, Soul Cauldron, all parts of their combo eventually. And we can attack. I guess I'll probably end up playing a Bitter Blossom here, but can maybe bluff having another Oculus in case they block my 2 2. So they might just take 7. Alright, opponent's risking it, but can't punish them here. Go for Bitter Blossom. And then if we manifest a few more times, we can cast Oculus number two. Another Goyf is good to be able to escape, although can also turn it face up here as a 3-4. So that seems a little bit more useful. So we'll see if our opponent's already capable of comboing. 
They discarded Kethys, they might have another one. Or a Cauldron to grind the ability. It's gonna be a Relic of Legends for now. And I'll just do this now. Spell Snare may or may not be useful. Alright, if they Fatal Push, we have enough cards for Oculus. So yeah, Thought Seizing myself, hopefully working out here. Unless her opponent can combo kill me right now. And once again, go for another Goyf, although it's kind of small right now. Cannot counter Kethys, but we might be able to counter a Soul Cauldron, for instance. But our opponent's got Kethys with Relic and Rona. So if they find some Mox Ambers now, we could die. Their opponent wants to be milling themselves. Goes for Jace. Untap Rona. And if they find a Mox Amber, we're in trouble. And are pretty likely to find one. Yep, they found two in fact. Yeah, they can start playing those out. Keep making mana by untapping Rona over and over, and then eventually mill me with Jace. So pretty sure we're dead here. Unless they maybe don't play around Spell Snare and we get to catch them off guard. But they've got enough legends in the graveyard where they've got a ton of mana to work with. Yeah, if they only had one Mox Amber, then they couldn't legend rule after playing the second one. But now they can. I guess I'll spell snare kin on here. But I don't think it's gonna matter. So we're tapped out, opponent can do whatever they want. Yeah. Get this combo is one of the most busted decks in historic. Since it's just so redundant, just needs to have a full graveyard and Kethys and then you're off to the races. Whoever slays the most Phyrexians win. We're in this together. <laughs> so Kinon will give them even more mana. Our opponent just needs to be careful that they don't time out at this point. And they do have to go through a couple uh, iterations to eventually mill us out with Jace. I'll take note of all your right, they're already gonna mill for 15. So they need to do that two more times. So play Mox Amber, makes two mana. Play it again. And they've got enough legends that they can keep exiling those as well. Mill for 15. Yeah, if we manifested Dread, let's say the Nether Goyf, when they blocked with Rona, and we were able to turn it face up to ambush it, there's a chance we might have been able to slow them down enough. But yeah, that'll do it. Good game. Kinon definitely speeds things up. And there we have it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Got Psychic Frog to maybe discard Oculus in case we find our Unearth to bring it back. And for now I'll keep up a Counterspell. Maybe less obvious that we're doing it if I don't take two damage. Opponent Mono Green, no play so far. Don't mind playing the Frog since we can get it out of range from our own Toxic Deluge. Assuming we find a third land. 
Alright, it's gonna be a troll, so it is a devotion deck. Troll's more annoying for Frog since even if they chump, they can still uh, get the enchantment to make more mana. So do I still bother attacking? I want to be discarding Oculus anyway. Stern Scolding and Spell Snare, not at their best. So I think I'm fine attacking since we even picked up the Unearth. So discard three cards. I guess for now, between Spell Snare and Turn Scolding, is there anything I want to keep up? I think I just cast another Goyf alongside Unearthing. And then we can grow another Goyf quite a bit more by discarding an artifact creature. I guess never mind, I don't have double black, so I can't actually play another Goyf here. I guess that was a downside of keeping up my counterspell last turn. And uh, we can add land as an extra type. For another Goyf. So yeah, had I just shocked the Watery Grave turn one, then now I would have played this on black and been able to play another Goyf. Deserted Temple can untap a land, more relevant with Nykthos. They still have four mana left. And a Karn, that's fine. Can maybe get some Graveyard Hate here. But the creatures we have in play don't care about it. Gets the Sky Sovereign. So we can finish off their Planeswalkers. Probably fine just playing the Nether Goyf still. Alright, do we Thought Seize then? Might be worth it. And see Sky Sovereign, Trailblazer, Storm the Festival. Which is the scariest. We have enough pressure in play where we don't absolutely need to have access to another threat. The Sky Sovereign can shoot a 2-2. Next turn they can maybe crew it. And in the meantime, we can move in on the Psychic Frog as well. Unearth doesn't have anything super exciting to return. So I can just go Strix plus Nether Goyf. And we can add some more types by discarding Baleful Strix. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is a bunch of interaction and a Bitter Blossom. There are matchups where this is fine, although we don't really have a powerful threat, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. So I'll take a mulligan. And this is a bit better. So we're on the play. Spell Snare is a little bit better on the draw, actually. Can go turn one Goyf, turn two Strix. I'm gonna give Oculus a chance, I think. And then keep Fatal Push over Spell Snare. Still a close call, because if her opponent's on an energy deck, Spell Snare can be very effective. But this might be awkward to keep up. And then I'll just fetch Swamp now. Opponents on blue-red, maybe wizards. Okay. Can play the Strix. If it gets countered somehow, it'll grow with another Goyf. And Inquisition could be useful, especially alongside Fatal Push. Against Wizards, Strix can maybe trade for a Burn spell or one of their creatures, so it tends to be pretty good. And Arcanist we can push. 
Okay, let's have a look. And we see Flame, Slick Shots, a bunch of pump spells, and Consider. So Flame is the 2 for 1 potentially, could even be a 3 for 1 with a Wizard in play. Slick Shot is what's going to kill me if I'm not careful, although I guess Strix gets in the way. So yeah, we'll take the Flame. Push Arcanists. And then I should probably keep Strix on defense. Then our opponent might just plot a Slick Shot, that's fine. It's going to be a long road to cast Oculus. But Liliana can maybe discard it to fill the graveyard. Balmor can now give their team Trample, so that gets past uh, Strix somewhat. And Unearth is exciting if we can get Oculus in the graveyard with Liliana first, but that might take a second. So yeah, a third land would go a long way. Opponent considers. Soulscar Mage can also shrink down an Athergoif potentially if they've got a burn spell. Opponent considers again. And also importantly, they now have a creature they could sacrifice to a minus two from Liliana. Mills another Reckless Charge, which can be flashed back. So one unknown card in hand. And it's a removal spell. So Strix down, can always unearth the Strix as well. If we don't have better options. Another Goif also quite large now, thanks to Creature and Artifact. But I can play Liliana. Although between Slick Shot and Double Reckless Charge, we're also potentially taking a lot of damage. So it's unclear what I should do. Four cards in Graveyard. Liliana probably has to just minus first. Opponent sacks Soulscar Mage. So then there's no point in keeping another Goyf back on defense. If I plus Liliana, it's less likely that I get combo killed. And then I could keep another Goyf back on defense. And then Balmor may or may not finish off Liliana, but I'll have Oculus in the graveyard ready to go. So I think I actually prefer that line. I don't think we're the aggressor anymore. And then if they finish off Liliana, that's fine, but I'm more worried about just dying. So now at least with a land they won't be able to go slick shot double charge, which I'm pretty sure would have killed me. So it's still gonna be a slick shot. And charge Balmor. So Liliana soaks up four damage, but it already put Oculus in the graveyard for us. Another Goyf up to 6 power, so yeah, wouldn't be able to both unearth and play Oculus. Could attack and then unearth Oculus, however. Is that worth it? I'll have two blockers, one of them a 5-5 flyer. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. There's also a chance we manifest another Nether Goyf, which would be great. So yeah, right now we have six cards in graveyards, and I guess I can play another Oculus after all. Another Goyf would shrink down, but we're about to manifest a bunch. Yeah, seems worth it, actually. And then, what's more likely, I guess land to end up in the graveyard. So I'll let the sorcery go now. And then double sorcery, all right, so putting landing graveyard would have worked out better in hindsight. All right, let's see for dead. Got two large flying blockers, some two twos on the ground. Opponent's got one unknown and triple charge. So the fact that they shock the land means they probably have another one mana play. 
It's another reckless charge. Okay. Am I dead? Take two, three, plus four, seven exactly. Wow. So they trample for seven total here. Yeah. What a close game once again. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is keepable. Kick things off with Nathargoif into Baleful Strix, most likely. Kind of hoping to discard Bitter Blossom to add more types for Nathargoif. Could have also gotten a Swamp to at least get it to 2 toughness, but it's not like there's a lot of 1 damage effects out there. And maybe we need Prismatic Vista to enable Revolt. Although I guess on the flip side, if I want to get in now with another Goyf, I don't really want to fetch Island necessarily, since I want double Swamp in play. So, yeah, can uh, maybe still Inquisition and take it from there. So your opponent on the red-white energy deck with Discharge and double Ocelots and Raptor. So Ocelot we can sort of answer with Deluge at some points. So maybe I do take either Discharge or Raptor. Yeah, I might be able to get the Goyf large enough to survive my own Deluge. It's going to take a little bit of effort. Yeah, I'll take the Discharge. We'll see how that plays out. And for now, just hang back. So our opponent plays a Raptor. Hopefully they don't hit anything too impactful. Allegiance landing, that's fine. So our opponent is going wide. And I'll play Strix. I can still Inquisition. Take an Ocelot. Alright, pass it back. And then we're just gearing up for this Deluge. If our opponent tries to attack to grow a creature, I could block with Strix, unless they're attacking with the first striking Raptor, which has less toughness than the Guide of Souls. So Deluge for 3 is still gonna work. And then I guess I'll soak up the damage here. Go for 4-5. No point in casting Inquisition, so just Deluge for three. Could have tried to attack first and our opponent maybe takes it, but if they chump, we miss out on some damage. So our opponent's on empty, and they're pretty far from casting a Jagatha, and our opponent scoops it up. Awesome! Toxic Deluge claims another victim. All right, so we get to see our blue-black Psychic Frog Strix deck in action, and very happy with how it played out. Some very close games along the way as well, so it seems like it can keep up with energy decks now that they've been nerfed, and uh, Oculus plus an Earth is perfect in this deck as well. So yeah, it's a lot of fun to play and seems powerful enough to keep up in the format. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.